Hello class, this is a, a pre-recorded lecture. We're going to finish up our, our lecture on the endocrine system. The last thing we talked about was uh, taking a look at the avian song learning system as an example of the organizational effects of androgens. Uh, and we learned about how there's a, a sex specific difference in brain structure and also the resulting uh, behavior in song learning between male and female songbirds. We took a look at the uh, experiments done in model organisms such as the zebra finch and the canary. And also one of the last things we talked about was this uh, experiment done in European robins in which uh, we learned that it's not so clear cut in free living species in terms of differences between male and female brains. Uh, females that were given exogenous testosterone uh, displayed plasticity in their neuroanatomy to more closely resemble uh, the neuroanatomy of males and also uh, increase their singing behavior. So, one of the things that's um, perhaps somewhat surprising, um, but well established, is that the organizational effects that we see due to androgens such as testosterone, which we just went over uh, in the song learning system, but we find this throughout uh, vertebrates, um, that testosterone seems to affect uh, the trajectory of the shape of the nervous system it's actually due to estrogens and not androgens directly uh, here we can see on the left the chemical structure of testosterone and uh, and on the right estradiol and estrogen uh, and in the middle, you see the word aromatase, which is the enzyme that converts the two. The only difference is a methyl group uh, that testosterone has that estradiol does not. Uh, and this is the general structure for steroid hormones, closely resemble, resembling um, cholesterol, uh, which steroid all steroid hormones are synthesized from. This is why it's important. This is why uh, cholesterol is a necessary um, nutrient for animals to take in their diet. They need it to synthesize these hormones. Of course, too much cholesterol can be bad for, for health, uh, as, as we've learned. Um, so, many of these examples that we just went over in the song, the song bird, is actually due to estrogen that's been converted from testosterone in the brain right before it takes it effects. Let me, let's take a look. Uh, and so what we hear, what we have right here is an illustration of this process of converting testosterone to estradiol. Um, the vast majority of the time, males are exposed to high levels of testosterone. And this is because um, by definition, or at least by definition, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, biological males uh, have testes. Uh, and testes secrete high concentrations of testosterone relative to typical biological females. Uh, and they, they do this um, in the organism uh, in utero or in ovo, uh, and also after, uh, after birth or after hatch. Uh, and as we've learned, it can have profound effects on the organization, the nervous system. But this testosterone that's circulating in the blood systems of, of these males, uh, they make their way uh, to the central nervous system. Uh, they enter cells, neurons, uh, and in those cells, 
uh, they are met with aromatase. And aromatase converts testosterone to estradiol. In the cell estradiol, the recently converted testosterone to estradiol can then interact with an estrogen receptor. And this estrogen receptor, um, this estradiol estrogen receptor complex can um, enter the nucleus and it can change, uh, it can um, act as what we call a promoter. It attaches to DNA and it can either suppress or activate the transcription of genes. So essentially, it can turn on genes or it can turn them off, depending on what gene it, uh, it attaches to. And so a major mechanism by which steroid hormones affects sexual dimorphism, which means sexual dimorphism is there is a difference between the sexes on average. Um, so the mechanism by which hormones affect sexual dimorphism is the cellular pathway that regulates cell death, which is called apoptosis. And so these steroid hormones can act as transcription factors uh, that determines whether or not a cell will continue on with will go down the path of program cell death or if it will survive. An example of this that we find in humans and other animals are um, the sexual dimorphic nucleus of the preoptic area. Uh, this is a part of the brain uh, that is on average different in size between typical male and female humans. And so exposure to high levels of testosterone, which in the neuron actually turns into high levels of estradiol, those neurons are rescued from cell death by the estradiol estrogen receptor complex <coughs> And so this area is sort of on a default program cell death and can be rescued, if you will, from program cell death if exposed to high levels of estradiol, uh, which, is, um, which is converted from testosterone. Um, the sexual dimorphic nucleus is a portion of the hypothalamus uh, and in humans as I said before it's larger in males on average and it's over twice as twice the size um, in males as it is in females and contains over twice as many cells in males as it does in typical females the sexual dimorphic nucleus um, mediates sexual attraction and courtship behavior uh, as well as um, copulatory behavior um, from studies in uh, uh, non-human uh, models. So it plays an important part in sexual uh, attraction uh, and behaviors around reproduction such as copulation and courtship. Uh, some examples uh, in non-human animals. Um, it plays a, a, a role in the uh, sexual preference of non-human animals as well. Rams that prefer same-sex sexual partners, which is about 8% of, on average, male uh, rams in any given population, 8% of male rams prefer same-sex sexual partners. Uh, that 8%, their sexual dimorphic nucleus is about half the size 
compared to the brains, uh, compared to the SDNs of male rams that prefer different sex partners. Uh, also, mirroring this in male ferrets, experimentally, who had their sexual dimorphic nucleuses bilaterally destroyed. So that means bilaterally that both sides, um, both areas, right? Most of the structures in our brain have sort of two uh, mirror copies of, of themselves on either side of the mid sagittal divide. And so if you destroy both of the sexual dimorphic nuclei on the left and the right, uh, these male ferrets will switch their sexual preference from females to preferring other males. So clearly this area in the brain uh, plays an important part, at least in these species, in sexual preference. And we know that the sexual dimorphic nucleus uh, is influenced by androgens during early development uh, on the left. Um, we can see this is a, uh, um, a section of uh, a rat brain. Uh, the dark area labeled with the arrow is the, the SDN. Uh, and we can see that it's much larger in males on the left. Than females in the middle, a relatively smaller uh, black cloudy spot. Uh, females that are given testosterone during early development, when the SDN um, is either going through programmed cell death or the cells are being saved by the estradiol estrogen receptor complex, we can see that these females exposed to testosterone there sexual dimorphic nuclei are similar, much more similar in size to typical males than they are typical females. 